So maybe there's some internal fuse blown or maybe even part of the electrical board is blown. All right, I wanna tell you guys about a project I did for a friend of mine. Basically needed some troubleshooting on his off-grid cabin. It sounded like a cool project. He originally started with a solar generator, magnum inverter, midnight uh, charge controller, and he had lead acid batteries. <clears throat> the system worked okay for uh, many years. I, and then he added some uh, LFP batteries to it. He actually built a pack with these 25 amp hour cells that he has he has a lot of these actually, so I'm looking to sell them to others if others are interested in building something with them. It's a 16S28P, so um, it's pretty large. It's like 35 kilowatt hours of, of energy capacity in this pack. Uh, maybe we get like 30 usable or something. He needed some help with a BMS hookup, so I went out there, helped, helped him set up the BMS. We got it sort of working, but then he had a lot of issues with it. Troubleshooting can be tough on these old systems because you don't really know well, what's going wrong. Before I went out on this last trip, I kind of assumed that because the BMS didn't have a pre-charge circuit in it, that the capacitors on the magnum inverter were tripping the BMS. Um, so that was kind of my assumption going into it. And so I brought a bunch of resistors and I brought an extra BMS just in case. Um, and so that's what kind of what I went in thinking what was the problem. So I'll share a clip of, of um, me doing some work there. And it's beeping quite a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this resistor. I'm going to jump it from here to here. The plan is we'll bypass the BMS for a very short period of time so we can charge up the capacitors in the inverter here. Once the capacitors are filled up, it shouldn't see a large inrush current at all on the BMS, and then the BMS can take over. Let's see how it goes. But then when I connected the resistor, kind of bypassed, I kind of did it manually. Nothing happened. I was kind of expecting a spark or the resistor to get hot or something like that. Um, and then, so, I said, well, that's kind of weird, and the BMS still couldn't connect. It kept on getting stuck in this loop where it beep a few times, turn on, then turn off, and it was just cycling. And kind of realized that maybe it's not a pre-charge problem. And I checked the voltage at the terminals of the inverter, because I'm like, if there's a voltage here, it's not the capacitors in the inverter. There's something wrong after that. So I checked the voltage is 50. You can see kind of what I uh, discovered here. And the inverter is not kicking on. So what is happening? Looks like I got some company in here. Start of a beehive. The bee keeps on flying in here. Get out of here, bee. Let's try it with, let's try it with adding the solar and see what happens here. But this thing won't turn on. The inverter won't turn on. So we have something else going on here. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, okay, so the solar really is giving it a voltage. I just measured uh, the cells and the stack voltage is 50.6. And the MPPT charge controller from the solar is providing high voltage, but it's still not turning on. So then I looked at the top and I saw those surge arresters or the surge protection devices up at the top. And I noticed that only one had a light on. So I said, huh, maybe these things are blown. Maybe there's a lightning strike or a surge or something. And the more I looked into it, I looked at these schematics here and I noticed that one of them was for DC and the blue light is on for that one. But then the other two are for the, I think the generator and the AC out and those lights were not on. And I said, well, that actually makes sense if the inverter isn't turning on. So I was kind of hoping they would be the surge arresters, but it looks like it's probably not that. I figured out a temporary workaround where they could just have the generator power the main loads. Luckily, this inverter does have a bypass switch, so we can just bypass it. Um, so for now, they have power at their off-grid cabin doing that. So it's really weird. The inverter failed to turn on, even though it definitely had 50-ish uh, volts on the main terminals. I thought it was something else, but it turns out that maybe this inverter is busted.
So even after unplugging everything and trying to really simplify um, what's connected to the inverter, if I just get 51 volts to the DC input on the inverter, it should turn on and it never turned on. So something happened where this inverter failed over time. Okay, so there's really two big issues at this site. Uh, the inverter's dead. This thing's 10 years old. Um, I think, you know, could we get it working again? Maybe. Could we open it up and do open heart surgery and replace some fuses and try to figure out what's going on? Maybe, but like, I didn't want to deal with that. Um, so I'm going to talk to my buddy and say, maybe it's time to get a new inverter. Um, there are like pretty amazing options nowadays compared to what was available five, 10 years ago. And on top of this, the second issue is the BMS was acting weird. The BMS never really connected. Um, and I think that has nothing to do with the inverter. So those are the kind of the big two things of this project we got to fix. We got to get a new inverter and a solar charger, and we um, have to either fix the BMS or get a new one. So we're going to have to replace this inverter. Um, there's really great options available now. Uh, this one um, is EG4. I see this company pop up all the time. I've never actually installed one, but they seem to be like really low price. Like, I don't know how they how, how they do this. I'm old school from the Outback, uh, Schneider, um, SMA days. So seeing these new inverters look really interesting. This one here is a 3KW off-grid inverter from EG4. Um, this might be the best one to get. Uh, there might be others similar to this. Um, hopefully it's not some cheap, unreliable product, but we'll we'll see how it goes. And um, I think for 700 bucks, it's, it's worth uh, testing this one out. The second thing is the JK BMS. I have mixed feelings about it. It works okay. I do like the Bluetooth um, connection to it, but honestly, it's been acting really weird. It doesn't have a built-in pre-charge circuit. Um, it's pretty easy to add one on the side, but um, it's acting really strange. So that we might replace the BMS. So we'll see if we can get this one working or, or we will replace it. So if you found this video interesting and you want to see where this goes, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be sharing more videos about this project. I don't know when this one will wrap up, but uh, I assume the next couple months we'll get the new inverter delivered, installed, and we'll make a whole video on it. Pretty cool to replace these old inverters that did work for 10 years with lead acid batteries and switching over to all this new technology. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Here are the cartoon mouse traps. <laughs>